for us in any forum that we are together with India, we feel that we are together with allies. And this is uh, very important to us. Also, people asked me in the past about Israel's position when it comes to permanent membership to India in the Security Council. Security Council yeah. And I think that also for us it comes very natural. We say, of course, we want our strong partners and, and responsible players to be in key positions in the world in general. Security Council is another one of them. But you don't think in this, and I asked this to Ambassador Astuto, you don't see in this arc of great power competition that's happening primarily between the U.S. and China, countries are being forced to take sides? And how do these smaller groupings then navigate that great power competition? So uh, the, I think the full battle is not there yet. We will see if it will get there, the economic battle that we all the time hear about. So there are here and there incidents, uh, semiconductors and others that we saw. But uh, I think countries will choose where they want to be, if they want to be. It's, you know, it's, an, it's a free world. Uh, everyone will hedge its bet bets where it's the right place to position himself, especially the bigger countries. I think no one can force anyone to do anything they don't want in our world today. Uh, there is, of course, uh, you make the calculation of balance of, of what you might gain or might, what you might lose from every tactic you take. But it's up to every, each of us to decide where they want to find themselves. Uh, Ambassador Dimitrios, Prime Minister Modi was in your country recently, the first Indian Prime Minister in, I think, 40 years uh, to, to be there. Uh, there is a sense here in India that Greece is somehow shaping to be uh, India's sort of gateway to the Mediterranean. We have tried through one other <laughs> big power in that region for a number of years, but because of geopolitical reasons, that hasn't really uh, gone too far. Uh, but is, is Greece now becoming some sort of a gateway, a maritime gateway for India into the Mediterranean and, and from there uh, towards mainland Europe? I think uh, Greece is becoming, or at least uh, has the potential to become, a gateway in every, in, in, in every point of view, not only as regards maritime. Of course, as you know, we have the biggest merchant fleet of the world is the one-fifth, 20% uh, of the international merchant fleet. But, uh, you know, this is uh, something that, uh, uh, that works uh, like an open spot market. I mean, if you have, uh, if you have the money and, and, and you buy, let's say, the cargo, you can move your, uh, you can move your products. It's not that much that. But uh, we are, uh, I think that we have the potential to become uh, the gateway of India to Europe uh, because of our geographical position, because we are, I think, the shortest uh, uh, and the cheapest way as regards uh, transportation cost uh, for Indian uh, producers to move, you don't think to move their produ products yes, to, to Europe, to all parts of Europe, Central Europe, North Europe, uh, South Europe. And also uh, we can become the gateway of India to Europe in another, in another way, that is by Indian investments that uh, they are welcome in Greece and uh, they can be very, very productive because I have explained many times in my, in my meetings, in my conducts with Indian businessmen, there are a lot of opportunities at this, uh, at this moment in the Greek economy that uh, they, the, the Indian investors they can grasp and become, let's say, extend their activity into the European, uh, the European economy. Uh, Ambassador Guillaume, we recently had the Pew Research Survey and some of our uh, audience here might have even read it. Uh, one thing that was surprising for me was the highest approval for Indians and for India is in Israel among all the countries in the world. I think it was 70% to 71%. Uh, were you surprised? And, and what would you attribute this to? Because 30 years ago, this would have been a different statistic. So, I don't know. The numbers maybe surprised me to be the highest, but uh, beyond that, I think that our relations are based very strongly on the people-to-people -people sentiments. When I came here, it's my sixth po posting as a, as a diplomat, third as ambassador. Uh, in many of the countries where I served, there were strong pockets of support to Israel. There were also some uh, people who opposed uh, my country. In India, I think, I feel it's the widest popular support towards Israel. So here, it's really, it's going both ways, in my, in my, in, at least in my feeling here. This is a very strong basis of the relations. So there are also practical cooperations which are extremely important, of course, 
but the emotional side is very strong. And I think that in Israel there is a lot of, also, um, there, there is this tendency for quite many years, people, when they leave their military service, they try to come to India, in yeah. general to uh, South Asia, but India is a long station here for a few months. It's a, as I call it, a full immersion backpacking uh, yeah. a tour. And there are quite They have many to go to Manali. So the, the Humus Trail, we call it the Humus Trail, all this, the place where they go. But, uh, you know, these people are already generations, so they bring their children now, and they have relatively deep no knowledge of the culture here and appreciation and love to India. There are people who are serial visitors, that they come not every year, every vacation they have an opportunity, mm -hmm. they come to India. So I'm not totally surprised. Uh, uh, it, how much of it is because of Fauda? I, the lead actor was there in our office a few weeks ago. I think he's in a mainstream Bollywood uh, movie now. Yes, yeah, so uh, Fauda, yeah, again, I think it's, it's many, many values. And each one has, when I speak to people here in India, each one has his own uh, explanation why he admires Israel. It's many, many, it's some technology, being a strong technology hub, being a very small country surviving against uh, a lot, of, uh, a lot of hostility in the region and thriving. And so each one has their own narrative. I buy all the narratives, by the most of the narratives I accept, as long as they support Israel and support our great relations, so I'm, I'm there. All right. Uh, I want to see if we have some audience questions uh, for the ambassadors. Yeah. Sharon, my colleague, is there. Yes, Zaka, we have a question over here. Uh, Shalom, uh, ambassador. So we both uh, agree that uh, rural development and agriculture are cornerstone of any nation's development in the future. And Israel has been working hard with our you know, teams here to develop centers of excellence and things like that. What are the niche technologies which Israel would be keen to partner with India to take the Indian story of rural development and agriculture ahead in the years to come and is something mapped out in the next 10 years? You can let us know, please. So we have, it's true, uh, we have about 30 centers of excellence in agriculture all around the country and we, we are another 15 in the making. So this is quite, quite a lot. These are technologies that are adequate to the small farmers. The big challenge here of taking India to the future is finding a way of consolidating to bigger, bigger farms. The small farms you cannot introduce, it's not the, the farmer, uh, cannot afford or does not have the ability to absorb the high-tech uh, uh, technology that there is today. So I think uh, consolidating to bigger farms will be an issue. Israel went through this process itself, but unlike India, we don't have this many, many years of culture of agriculture coming from gra grandfather to father to, to, to son, to father to son to grandchild. So all that uh, it's very hard culturally to, to consolidate to bigger farms, but I think it's, it will be a need of the future sometime. What we are putting a lot of effort here is into water management. So being probably the number one leader of the world in water management because of the scarcity, uh, we know and we have the only water at the chain in the world in the embassy uh, in order to help in water planning. So the execution will be done by India, but a lot of the technologies uh, are technologies that we use of reuse of water. We reuse 90% of our water, we repurpose it to, uh, to agriculture. Uh, the loss of water here is too high. So uh, many, many elements in India uh, that I think in water, uh, improving the quality of the water, the avail availability of the water and the usage of the water to the right, adapting the right, uh, the right agriculture, to the right water resources and the climate and everything. So we are doing quite a lot of work in these fields. All right. Uh, I believe one more question. Where is uh, Sharon? Sharon has, has the mic. So we have a question for the Greek ambassador to India over here. Uh, hello, Ambassador. My name is Augustine. And uh, Greece and India, we are very old civilization. And I happen to travel uh, all over East, uh, in Greece and into the uh, island nations of your, I mean, island place of yours, and I've seen that Greece has changed over time. Uh, probably your immigration policy has sort of backfired, and we have in India a great working population and a peaceful working population. So, how are you looking at reworking your migration, immigration policies?
That's a, that's a core debate, not just in Greece, across Europe. Uh, how, how are you dealing with that challenge? Okay, there are, there are two issues, two sides here. The one is illegal, irregular migration, and the, the, other, uh, the other side is legal, regular uh, uh, migration, lawful migration. Anyway, to, to, put it, uh, to put it straight and very simply, at this very moment we are uh, working with Indians in order to complete an, an agreement an agreement of uh, migration and mobility in order to bring uh, Indian uh, workers, Indian uh, scientists and uh, Indian people to work uh, to Greece and to live in Greece and to work for the, for the Greek economy. This right. is our point of view and, uh, and all Indians are welcome uh, in Greece. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, the ambassadors of Israel and Greece.